Hey guys, it's Sam Gukla. This is gonna be a quick video tonight, but I think it's something super important, and it's how to get a big sound really fast. So if you're playing on a tune and you don't like the way it's coming out, try this trick, and I guarantee you, you will like the way you play. So this trick is derived from the fact that we tend to have the best embouchure and voicing position when we're playing overtones. Now I've explained overtones in a couple other videos, but just for a quick refresh, the notes B flat, B, C, and C sharp, can all be played in the overtone series. So an octave, an octave and a fifth, two octaves up. Those are as far as we're going for this exercise. We don't need to do anything higher. Also know that A above the staff can be played using a D fingering. And D above the staff can be played with the G fingering. So first of all, just put overtones in your warm-up. They're important. They get your embouchure in a good position, and they set you up for success. But you can also play them during your repertoire. Um, and I'm going to demonstrate this on a Grant Maynard Ferguson Standard Blues for Cap. And this tune's kind of funky because of the dynamics. You really want to play it, um, as our director's saying, a drunken guy. Um, and playing lead alto, you have to find the correct balance between style and substance. Um, so when I've been playing this in rehearsals, I've been finding it starts to sound a little reedy. Um, so I'm going to use this technique in my practice session, which is right now, to try and get that fuller sound so I have better control over the pitch when I'm playing strong dynamics. So all I'm going to do is play the song out of time. And anytime I hit a note that can be played using a note in the overtone series, I'm going to play that overtone series note. So notes I can play on this phrase I'm going to do, A, C, C above the staff, A flat, G. I'm going to stand up so I can demonstrate. My head's going to get cut off. Sorry about that. So my tongue and my throat were dropped too low, or I wasn't using enough air. Um, usually you can self-direct. I'm going to predict that one was a tongue position issue. But you just do that throughout the whole tune. So if I were going to not play it, you thinking about overtones with bad, I'm sure it sounds like this. I just practiced. It sounds like this. So because I have a better tongue position and my embouchure is relaxed but engaged, I'm able to have a lot more control over the techniques I'm using, which makes it more musical. I would recommend using this technique anytime you're not really liking the way you're sounding or if your chops are starting to hurt. Your chops really shouldn't hurt ever if you're voicing and embouchuring correctly. So this is a really great exercise to reset yourself. And another tune that's really good for this one, if you want to incorporate this into a daily routine, is Body and Soul. Because 80% of it is overtone notes on the alto. Um, not so great on other pitched instruments, but... There are tunes. <laughs> um, I'll demonstrate it right now. <laughs>
friend when playing overtones. This technique out on Body and Soul and any other tunes that you're working on that you just don't love your sound on. Um, obviously, this is technique's not going to work for you if you're not doing overtones in your warm-up. So do your overtones in your warm-up. Check out my video that explains how to do that. And if you try this technique on some of your repertoire and you think it works well or you think it works terribly, please tell me how it goes in the comments. And as usual, like, subscribe, follow me on Instagram, all that good stuff. Have a good one, guys.